Before she created Peter Rabbit, Beatrix Potter was a scientist. Long before she was famous for storybooks, she was lying on the forest floor with a magnifying glass, studying fungi. In an age when women were expected to sew and serve tea, Beatrix was dissecting mushrooms and sketching them with microscopic precision. Born in 1866 to a wealthy London family, she wasn't supposed to make discoveries, she was supposed to make a good marriage, but Beatrix had other plans. From childhood, she kept a small zoo of rabbits, mice, frogs, and even a hedgehog named Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. She didn't just love them, she studied them. Every drawing she made was an act of science, every whisker and paw rendered with accuracy. In her 20s, Beatrix became fascinated with fungi. She collected mushrooms, studied their spores under a microscope, and developed a theory about lichens, those crusty growths on rocks and trees. She proposed that lichens were not plants, but a partnership between fungi and algae. She was right, but the Victorian scientific establishment didn't want to hear it. In 1897, she submitted her paper on the germination of the spores of Agaricinae to the Linnean Society of London. Women weren't allowed to present, so her uncle submitted it for her. The paper was dismissed, not because it was wrong, but because she was a woman. Beatrix was devastated. Years of study and careful observation ignored. She could have given up. Instead, she pivoted. If science wouldn't publish her work, she would publish something else. She turned her sketches into stories. The same animals she once studied now had names and manners. In 1902, she self-published The Tale of Peter Rabbit. It was an instant success. Over the next decade, she wrote 23 books. Jemima Puddle Duck, Benjamin Bunny, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Her stories weren't just cute. They were grounded in nature and observation. Every tree, feather, and paw print was real. She used her earnings not for luxury, but for land, buying farms, raising sheep, and protecting the English countryside. When she died in 1943, she left over 4,000 acres to the National Trust. In 1997, a century after her rejection, the Linnean Society issued a formal apology. They admitted she'd been dismissed because she was a woman. Too late for her, but not too late for history. Beatrix Potter didn't just create Peter Rabbit. She proved that science and art could grow from the same root, and that no rejection can silence a curious mind. Because when the world told her no, she didn't stop. She just found another way to be heard.